I am H.O. 101 Jams, number one for classics in today's hip-hop and R&B, home of Cheryl Underwood Radio, the Rise and Grind Morning Show. Mm -hmm. But this is, in my humble opinion, Maxilia, Charles, Razor, and we have Aaron Simmons. And uh, to close out this, uh, this hour, to close out the show, we have none other than Charlottesville's own independent running for city council. Uh, she was born and raised in Charlottesville, been a youth counselor assistant, uh, project and community organizer, uh, youth counselor, uh, substance abuse clinician, uh, and the list goes on, on, and on. We're talking about Miss Nakaya Walker. Nakaya, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to to talk to our listening audience. Um, November seventh is right around that corner. Oh and, my uh, goodness, ten days, <laughs> ten days. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, and so we so we want you know we wanted to use today's show as a platform to make sure that our listeners who maybe couldn't get out you know to the uh, uh, you know like to the parties to the to the town yes, halls yeah. the forums all that good <clears throat> stuff to make sure that if they listen to the radio they would have that opportunity maybe their their last shot before November seventh. Mm -hmm. So, why uh, the independent candidate, Nakia Walker? You know, sort of introduce yourself and, and why you? Why you on November 7th? I mean, you you vote. I've been telling people the entire campaign process, you know, just vote for someone who's aligned aligned with your vision, you know, that will, that will work for you. And um, we have a lot of people who, um, you know, want jobs, want to be in positions, but, um, you know, who who they cater to and who they work work for. Um, and it's been clear everything from my um, campaign um, slogan, campaign colors, the entire mm. process of running for council uh, that um, who, who I have been supportive of working to towards you know helping fix some of the disparities mm -hmm. where where my where my where my passion lies and right. I just um you know I've been doing this you know doing the you know the in the trenches doing the work the na the list of occupations you name that list you are you're in the trenches doing doing that work mm -hmm. and I um you know and I know more importantly than anything I know how to honor people mm -hmm. and I know that um people their voices mattered and so mm -hmm. what i want to do is bring the people who voices are not in the room and not me being a voice for them but mm -hmm. to make sure that they understand that none of this is going to be fixed without um without mm -hmm. them in yeah. the room and now in saying all that mm -hmm. do you and i say this with all due respect because i know how educated how well informed and how qualified you are but do you feel somewhat like a cinderella story coming in really opposing the current establishment mm -hmm. but still getting this level of success because i'll be honest with you like when i looked around town and i see the number of our white citizens mm -hmm. You know, with that sign in the yard, and mm -hmm. you know, and when I look at, you know, I'm like, how you really are, you know, uh, coming in, shaking things up. Like, is, is any of this a surprise to you, or this is going according to plan? Um, I think the part. <laughs> <laughs> Be um, honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was ready for the fight, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. You mm -hmm. know, I could have had some very nice generic campaign slogan. My campaign slogan is "Unmasking the Illusion." Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are two cities in this one, right, and a lot of people are not thriving and the Charlottesville that people um, talk about discuss that end up in magazines the you know best places to live mm -hmm. way before the events of the summer you know when people were comfortable I, yeah. I tell people all the time when you're talking about oppression white supremacy white privilege and what your skin tone being white brings mm. no one had to give me permission I was talking about that in March when I announced mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. before anything happened this summer so I was ready, um, you know, to spend this time doing this campaign process, you know, making sure that I honored where I've come from mm -hmm. and honored, you know, the people that, you know, that that's primary for me. But at the same time, um, you know, just just being true, not I mean, integrity is still intact. Right. right. And um, again, I do have a lot of skills, but a lot of people have a lot of skills. You know, True. so a lot of people can tell, um, you know, a, a, a different story if they're just given, you know, the opportunity. Um, 
to tell that different story. And so I think that um, I don't think I'm a Cinderella story, right. but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely I I, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The events of the summer also helped a lot of people start paying attention um, that wasn't necessarily on board. So there are a lot of people who were just going to run down that um, Democratic ticket and check, check, check. Right. Um, and that now they're saying hold on, let, let us look. Mm -hmm. But even before um, May happened, where the alt-right started coming into, you know, into our space, I have been clear, mm -hmm. right? I have been clear about who I am, where I've been, and the direction that I think we as a city, you know, we need to take. And I've been clear about, you know, like a Richard Spencer type with all his wealth and the privilege of being white. He's not an outsider from this community. So I have not been willing to jump on board with that story being told. Mm -hmm. There are Richard Spencers at almost all the leadership tables that I've sat in. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the story that we need to, um, you know, talk about other people who influences all of these disparities that that we're talking about because we're usually talking about numbers but because I'm from this area um, and I know the faces I know the names I know the people mm -hmm. um, so I'm not talking about numbers I'm mm -hmm. talking about humans I'm talking right. about you know family and stories. friends yeah. and friends of family and friends and so it's just a different you know level of commitment mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and when in I didn't set out like I must have this mm -hmm. um, when I decided to, you know, contemplate it, whether I would run and decided to go through it. It was like you will tell, you know, the story that you know to be true mm, and okay. you will be true to that process. Right, right. So, so then, Nakaya, how about we like sort of dig into it for for people who say, "Wow, you know, like I really like Nakaya. I like how she's standing up for, you know, the the people of Charlottesville who maybe have been overlooked uh, for for Not far, maybe. For, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> people maybe. who have been looked <laughs> overlooked, been overlooked for far too long. Yeah. Um, so, but then they want to say, but Nakaya, you got to Sometimes in politics, you got to make more friends than enemies. So, how are you going to get this done? So, so, when you look at living wage and job creation, for for instance, uh -huh. um, like what's some what's your what's your platform there mm -hmm. yeah. so and i'll answer to, you know both of those questions mm -hmm. so you do have to get something done mm -hmm. but don't come to me with crumbs expecting me to jump on board with that mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. just that's been a difference um what i think people talk about compromise and settling when they're talking about lives that don't affect those you know theirs mm -hmm. i'm not going to accept anything less for the families in the shawls for community that i wouldn't accept for my own family um, so that's one of the things that has been um, different. I just left a um, meet and greet where I was asked that, like, how are you going to work with other, um, you know, other people? And what I basically said to them is that the Charlottesville community is going to have to decide how we want to move forward as a community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a lot of dysfunction. And I, you know, equated that to fire. I'm not foolish. I'm not stepping into the fire with them. So mm -hmm. even with being willing to, you know, go on council, what I'm saying is that I'll, you know, attempt to help fix this with a we, like the community going coming on board with changing faces. But I'm not saying that I'm stepping into the dysfunction with the current, um, how current leadership operates, because that's not how I operate. So the compromise can't be about me becoming dysfunctional with them. Mm -hmm. You have to want something different. Um, you asked about a living wage. I've been working on a living wage campaign within the city for the past, you know, um, less than, you know, two years. And the city's um, <clears throat> entry pay was 1095 an hour and it is now 1379 an um, per hour mm -hmm. um, I did not go into the rooms expecting people who make $200,000 a year um, $90,000 a year um, who knows with some of the other you know city council members and their you know outside work what they earn if they understood why that was important mm -hmm. I set it as a priority and then I went to the budget meetings I talked to you know individual counselors and I kept telling you know, the stories of people who were affected by, you know, the low wage. So, again, I wasn't looking for um, permission to start that campaign. It was something that, you know, needed to be done. And I kept working at it until we have now, 
you know, in that short time frame and as a city employee, you know, pushing, you know, to make sure that people who came in at the entry level were they were paid well. So I think there's a difference. You know, when Dorothy Heights passed away, she said that something that was wrong with the generations that came after them in the civil rights movement was the whole asking for permission. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I make sure that I mean, I definitely honor. um, But if there are certain situations that and if you walk in the rooms in Charlottesville, you can see this where there isn't um, you just have to, again, set the priority and, and move from there. Hello, Miss Walker. Yes. Got a question for you. This raising. <laughs> um, I want to be fair, just like we did with everybody else. So I'm going to list a couple things and then I'm going to get out your way. All right. All right. <laughs> Stop and frisk. Uh-huh. All right. And what do you plan on doing as an increase in the businesses? For the minority uh, people that try to start business that seems so hard to do in the city of Charlottesville. And last question, um, when it comes to like Section 8 affordable housing, mm-hmm. you know, I know that you stand strongly on that. But as they do these renovations and they rebuild them, they seem to outprice the people that were originally living there. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to take your stance at? Oh, so you have to remind me of all the questions, okay. but I'll start with the last one. Yeah, all right, no problem. Um, so the affordable housing piece, I've been, um, you know, one of the key voices in the um, redevelopment plans for Friendship Court for the past what, three years now. Um, basically telling them that you can't come into somebody's space. Those that land is already occupied with families mm-hmm. who live in, in those homes and the way PHA currently has their master plan set up. And I will interject here and say there is possibly the new director. He sounds very hopeful, but he's just coming in and he's coming into a community that may want something different. New director and, um, of public housing? Pu- no. P my housing alliance okay. and that's who um, runs um, friendship court okay. but Ooh, right now sure. they have the um, setup where they're you know we won't displace the 150 families you know that that live there 48 to 50 um, affordable housing and that's the affordable housing that people are comfortable with where were our doctors teachers um, you know not doctors teachers um, police officers firefighters mm-hmm. live mm-hmm. doctors are not in that affordable housing that was mis- you know era right, um, right. <laughs> so make sure people understand that but um (laughs) and then 350 to 400 units of um, market rate you don't come into somebody else's space and then again the way that currently is set up it would displace people even if they were able to offer their master plan you know not displace the 150 um there it does nothing to fix the crisis that we are currently in Mm -hmm. and then you're talking about bringing in um the 350 to 400 market rate um units efficiency to one bedroom um so you're basically bringing single income single people with a lot of income into neighborhoods where there are families and a lot of children we already and this goes to the stop and first question we already have major issues um in you know how Mm -hmm. um black people and people uh at the lower economic chain are policed um how social services um, interact with their families whether they're even able to raise their own kids and then you know, that's right there is a setup for both of those agencies to receive more calls when people mm. feel like parents are not parenting the way they think they should. Mm-hmm. And with the major social issues that we already have in this town, that's again, it may not have displaced them initially, mm-hmm. but that's something right there that could displace them you know, at some point during the process and break down, you know, the family unit. Mm-hmm. And until mm-hmm. we address all some of the major issues we have like why are the majority of people who are um, stopped and frisked African American males Mm -hmm. um, who ends up in our jails, state and federal prisons, um, you know that's still happening Um, and it's been happening and and I've said we are still fighting a 1980s war war on drugs why why are we doing that Mm -hmm. i was at a meeting um friday friday night and a former judge said you know people were getting um you know more time because you know they got a higher high with Mm. crack cocaine and pot wait a Mm -hmm. minute so you are sentencing people (laughs) and in charge for a long time based on how high they no Mm -hmm. no 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 and so again chemistry class he missed you know a few things but you know (laughs) that conversation didn't because we know 
as a community that um, because of, you know, Iran-Contra, guerrilla war and the need to destroy the black community and using the money from that destruction is why drugs flooded our mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. Let me, so. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and have you finish answering those um, questions All on right. Razor's List. So again, family, you're tuned in to In My Humble Opinion on 1013 Jams and we are speaking with Nakaya Walker, who mm-hmm. is running for city council. Get out and vote November 7th. I am HO 101 Jams. Thanks for joining us in, uh, on today's I am HO election show. And as stated before, if you're new to the show today, we are right now joined by Nakaya Walker. And she is a city council candidate. And uh, November 7th, as we said, and we've been saying all show, is, uh, is, is almost here. So Time to, time to start making up that mind um, and make sure you go out. Most importantly, make sure you show up and be present, be accounted for, because uh, it is a right. So, Nakai, uh, where we left off at, I um, want to make sure that, that you had opportunity to complete your answer. Uh, let's, let's, let's go back to the to the stop and frisk, uh, whether you agree or disagree with that. And if, if disagree, if it then, should ha- um, be happening. Yeah. yeah and then no, if, it shouldn't. And if not, like then as far as when people say, well, we need to keep our community safe. What are some, uh, some, some, uh, some law enforcement changes that you would like to see in, in place of that? Yeah, so the main thing that um, I think needs to happen is a citizen advisory board for the police department with okay. um, enforcement po- powers. And um, that would mean, like, right now, if you submit a complaint to the police department, they are in charge of reviewing that. You never get any feedback, usually. They um, usually claim that it's a personnel issue. So that's really about... Um, and it needs to be a diverse group of citizens. It can't just be the, you know, usual people mm-hmm. who are, um, you know, who are who are at the table. We need to make sure that there's a diverse um, group of people who understand the ab- abusive practices that Charlottesville Police Department has had on a citizen. Um, mm-hmm. Dismantling, I've been calling for this the entire campaign and before, dismantling of Jade Task Force and the and the way it works. Um, and luckily, there's a un- you know the unfortunate events of the summer but now there's um you know a lot of people calling for you know more oversight which will mm-hmm. help us you know get more oversight for the communities that have been um policed in a very mm-hmm. aggressive manner i tell people all the time there was stand down you know um on august 12th um mm-hmm. or the appearance of a stand down order but in Um, our communities that is not what's happened the police department is very aggressive and um, the militarized police state you know a lot of our families um, know all too well yeah Um, yeah and uh, and that you know that that brings to mind the the whole transparency part of it whether mm -hmm. it's law enforcement or city council and and things that's what but we've seen even where body cams cameras aren't Mm -hmm. making a difference you know Um, so so when when we talk about uh, uh, that accountability and things like that is it do you think it's just as simple as we just need to get the right people in office or is it more we definitely, policy no we yeah. definitely so the right people being mm. in office will dictate the policy changes right, right. Um, that we're mm. needed we also have to change the culture so if our police department has been used to um, doing business one way mm-hmm. we need them to know that you know with that um, advisory board um, intact and this was something that Jeff Vogel was calling for also doing his entire campaign you have a different level of um, scrutiny that they will fall under and not just you a pat on you know the hand don't do that again you Mm -hmm. need a new job Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so there are if you are um and if you have committed criminal activity you need to be prosecuted Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. prosecutor office has have not been willing to prosecute officers who have been accused of um and we know from across the country that um you know that 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 happens that they are not ethical and so um you know we need that advisory board would force where the police have been very protective of itself um up until this point it will force them to um you know to into those changes Ms. walker touching yeah. on that all right not going back to you know huey p newton or anything like that mm-hmm. but <laughs> why <laughs> now i ain't gonna do that to i ain't gonna do that to when um why don't the police departments that police an area match the people that they're policing? Mm-hmm. Why well, do you think that's the case? So if we're if well, we're we talking know. about they're not yeah. getting like you know when they do something wrong, they're not getting looked at or prosecuted the way that they should. Mm-hmm. Do you think that 
if we make the police force match the area they're policing, that a lot of the stop and frisking and, and unethical things that go on to those people might go down. It's possible. So that, but diversity is very important no matter what. So we definitely need a diverse police force. But we saw with Baltimore mm. that there were officers who were the same skin tone as um, Freddie Gray who mm. p- participated. Yeah. And so that's a culture change, right? Um, that that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. So yes, diversity is um, the diversity of the police force, and yes, they need to hire more. Um, Black officers, um, mm-hmm. Hispanic officers, we see, you know, see that across the board, the need for that. But um, we can't just stop there. And that's, again, what the advisory board with enforcement powers would make sure no matter mm-hmm. who you are, you understand that we are talking about building a different culture. And mm-hmm. that is going to be a lot of work because we're talking about even the police, um, the creation of a police state, what, the, what they are invented to do. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. citizens are going to have to be. Um, very involved in saying this this is what we want okay we uh, want something you know completely different mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. and those those other two things that, that we had touched on earlier I mm-hmm. um, want to make sure like that we get your approach um, mm-hmm. your preferred approach when, when it comes to having an area um, to nurture and grow uh, minority business mm-hmm. um, you know of course making it affordable but then it also the, the housing piece because a lot of times we see development but then once you develop it develops to a point to where people who are living there no longer can, yeah. can live there so but when we talk about the approach on, 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 on how to move people into whether it's home ownership or just affordable um, housing you know while growing our business uh, those two things how, how do you want to approach those So that talk, you know, we have a um, major um, income piece for me to sit here and tell you that I have this master plan and I've been telling people the entire campaign, it would be impossible. Mm. You're talking about, let's just take friendship court development again, families with the um, median um, income of $10,800. And so you're talking about a town where anywhere between, depending on what you're looking at, the area median income is between $76,000 and $8,000. $84,000 $84,000 um, a year and you're talking about um, housing being um, purchased you can't purchase a house if your income is $10,800 right, right? right. Mm-hmm. at the way things are currently set up mm-hmm. um, so we're back to even um, how to move people you know out of poverty and again mm-hmm. we're talking about another major culture shift yeah. Right. Yeah. So we have a school system where there are two division within one school system. So a lot of our kids are not prepared. They don't they're not prepared with, um, you know, to be able to even move into um, something like um, uh, uh, the community college. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have the school to prison pipeline that's very alive and well. Anything you're talking about to help people. Um, obtain the income that's needed to move into the spaces that you that you're talking about. We have major work to do um, in every in 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 all those areas. Um, mm. So we have most of our kids graduating with diplomas that don't mean anything. Mm. The technical college isn't creating people. Um, you know, st- our students are not leaving something like K Tech with skills that they can walk into a place and um, you know and and gain be gainfully employed Mm. right so we Mm. have to change how our school system is run we have to get away from this everyone has to go to college there are some people who don't i mean i have family members who significantly have made significantly more money than i've made without Mm. a college degree right so it's it's talking about not not preparing them for college but if they choose because they have the choice not to go, um, mm-hmm. that they have the skills to go into an occupation that they are ready for. And when you're talking about um, mechanics, plumbers, electricians, right. people make, they should not have to go to college, one, to be able to walk into the workforce mm-hmm. if, um, you know, for those um, for those jobs. But those people get paid a lot of money. I know any of them that have ever shown up at my house. Mm-hmm. So that's also changing yeah. this movement um, that... If you don't go to college, you're not prepared for life. Mm-hmm. And it's letting people understand that while everyone needs to be educated so that they can have the choice of college if they want choose that, mm-hmm. that we're also making sure that we step up, you know, the technical, um, you know, like K Tech. Right. Also, you know, Wes is kind of headed. Um, 
you know, there with making sure that there are more minority contracts within the city, um, you know, within um, the city government being awarded, you mm-hmm. know, to m- minority owned businesses. And then, you know, the investment um, into those businesses, the city can do a much better job. Right, right, okay. For instance, um, you know, what are properties the last two city council meetings ago? And if you watch that, you will you can see my comments. They had they received an eight hundred and fifty thousand loan back in 2007, a no interest loan. Um, that was supposed to be due um, pay in five years that now they just got the second extension for. So if we can give a private owner who's been capitalizing off of their investment, mm-hmm. then we can invest in minority black businesses in, right, in right. the same way. Got you, got so you. Um, those are the things that if I were on council mm-hmm. that I would be pushing for and I would be highlighting mm-hmm. that we don't have a problem with um, giving those kind of funds. <coughs> That's almost a million dollars that yeah, yeah, he's right, now right. had had a no interest free flow even though he's been earning money mm-hmm. the, yeah, in, yeah. the entire part of the process gotcha. so the um, guy so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back to wrap it up with you okay, okay. all right thank you we'll be right back i am ho with nakaya walker city council candidate all right and we're back you're tuned into in my humble opinion and we're speaking with nakaya walker a candidate for city council we're wrapping up this uh interview here um nakaya i definitely wanted to touch on um your environmental um focus um, that's mentioned in your campaign. And then um, it, with regard to affordable housing, I, I worked in it for quite a few years, and I wonder if you'll be um, directing any of your attention as far as getting people out of affordable housing. And, and people hear that, and they think that you know, they may be offended. What do you mean get us out? But um, I think people kind of fall into a trap of being there. Um, and so I wonder um, probably some of the things that you've already mentioned, mm-hmm. but what type of things... Um, and is that on your your to do list of helping to get people, um, you know, living on the same income level as others and and things like that? Oh yeah, that's I mean that's the ultimate goal, right? Where you do this work so that um, you know people can dis- choose um, whatever direction they decide to take. We have to you know acknowledge that there there isn't a level playing field one of the things that i would push on council um right now is the city doing um more education around native families who do own homes in charlottesville who those homes are being um brought right from under them from there's a developer over in the 10th um and page neighborhood who has been purchasing properties from families um because they can't fix them up or with the upkeep, you know, and then they get um, a lump sum of money out of them and then renting them back to them. And they've been not getting anywhere near the market, you know, rate value, you know, for their home. So that that's a piece and even just keeping families in their homes who currently have homes. Yeah. Um, but we have we are so far away from the 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 space we need to be in for people you're talking about essentially moving out of affordable housing to the equivalent of people being ready to step out of that space and move into the Gleasons unless we change the way we do work in every area which is what every day when I step into any room that is my goal mm-hmm. right, the same right, goal I have for my family is for mm-hmm. you to be able to move through this life the way you choose to yeah yeah and right? I, I think it's more of an educational piece of just to make sure people are at least informed on how things are working you know for those who want to take that next step you know mm-hmm. Um, form, yeah, but you yeah. have to have the skills and you have to have the resources, right? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. So you're yeah. talking about people renting the Gleasons for forty five hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Average incomes for new developments starting renting one bedrooms twelve hundred plus dollars, mm-hmm. right? And you have people who are struggling to um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to pay minimum rent, and they're not struggling because they have been um, and and again accountability. And there's nobody in my family who wouldn't tell you that we don't start the conversation with like how you move differently in your world too Mm -hmm. and accept ownership but we have to understand that when the cards have been stacked against you how much work to you know take uh, you know remove some of those policies that have been in place that have been implemented and instituted so that you could be trapped that's a you know that's part of the conversation we have to have i hear so many kids thinking they're stupid and dumb because they are in a right. school system that's been set up to keep them exactly in exactly. that cycle yeah, yeah. so it's about you know one um making sure that we value 
mm-hmm. everyone in all spaces and give them the same opportunities. And like I said, I wouldn't yeah. accept any, you know, anything less um, mm-hmm. than, you know, I would accept for my own my own family. Right. right. So, I, I, and uh, definitely just to kind of tie up my uh, question, I definitely agree that there are a lot of factors that play a part in getting people um, to the level that you and I are speaking of. I, I just know that with my experience there, some families get there and and don't aspire to any more. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just curious as to whether But or not I think when you have a, a the, the the deck stacked against you mm-hmm. is even when we are talking about families um being, you know, more vocal about their space. You know, I work with families and who don't even think that they have the agency to walk into a school system and tell the school right what they want for their children they don't even think they can influence the like IEP you know (laughs) program with whether their kids receive special Mm -hmm. education services or not Mm -hmm. and when you tell them no you do have a right if you don't want X to happen it don't happen Mm -hmm. you know that's foreign and that's how beat down people are you know and so if I, I haven't been in that space. You know, luckily, I came through three women who made sure that I always understood that I could walk in any space and own it. But people who did not have that, that's the, that's where the work is. The work is for, yeah. you know, to for them to know that they are somebody they right. are pushing, right. pushing for them. And so they don't have to fall into those states of um, despair mm-hmm. and they don't have to, you know, just give up. I can I. I I hear the stories. I have the friends. I know. I mean, my own family. I understand why some people um, can't continue to fight. But I think if we set the scene to let them know it's somebody in the yeah. ring with you, then things things shift. Right. All right. Well, Nakaya, we pressed up for time, but but this has been awesome, very informative. So please, as we close, let the people know uh, how to how to reach you. Um, lead up to November seventh. Yeah, votenakaya.com um, website. You can catch me on um, Facebook, and um, I look forward to um, seeing you at the polls. And if you want to chat between now and then, just um, send me a message through um, the votenakaya.com, and I will get back with you.